In today's video, we're going to take a look at a new utility that comes with Vault 2014. This utility that we're going to take a look at is called the Autodesk Reference Repair Utility. And what this utility is going to be used for inside a vault is, you know, if you've got any of those daily relationships inside of the vault. So if you take a look at a, you know, a, a part file and you go over the to where you use and you're trying to look for the assembly, but you know it's actually a link to an assembly, but it's not listed there. So what the vault utility will actually allow you to do is kind of run a scan inside of the vault and it'll actually look for missing references. And it'll actually create an actual table and it'll actually list out all the different missing references. And then you can actually use the reference table inside of Excel, make your modifications, and then we can actually re-import that back in through the command line and it'll actually go and actually repair all of our references. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can actually do that. So before we start, let's take a look at a couple of the issues that we might have. Um, with the, the Autodesk Reference Repair Utility, you have to make sure that you have Microsoft Excel installed because we're going to be using this to actually use to, to edit the reference table that gets created. Also, what Autodesk strongly recommends is that you disable the purge until you've gone and actually repaired all the relationships um, on the vault using the, the actual repair process. Another option is you want to make sure that before you do anything is you have a valid backup. So you want to make sure you go into ADMS console and actually create a backup. So let's take a look at an example. So here I'm just launching up the vault console and we can see right here I've got a, a file or a folder right here that says table design reference issue and over here inside the actual vault grid you can see here I've got an assembly and a couple of parts. If I click on a part file underneath where used, you notice that there's no relationship over here. So there's no link between this part and this assembly that Vault knows of. So in order to get to this state, what I've done is simply just drag and drop the actual assembly file and all the parts. That's something you do not want to do. So what you want to make sure is if you go underneath tools and then administration and vault settings, so again this is going to be done on the admin side, you want to make sure that you turn this option on, disable check-in of design files. So while this is turned on, anytime a user tries to do a drag and drop of, you know, inventor file, Revit file, AutoCAD file, anything like that, like a CAD formatted file, it actually come up with a pop-up saying that, hey, wait a minute, you can't check this in because you have to use the actual application in order to check it in. See, Windows doesn't understand uh, about the actual relationships of a file. Windows just sees it as just a file type. Right, it just sees size, it sees metadata information. But inside of Vault and you know the actual CAD application, it understands that this is an assembly file, this is a part file. There's a link between these two files here. So again here, if I go to the assembly, if I go to uses, notice nothing comes up here, and underneath where used, there's no information here. Now another example on an assembly that's working correctly, if we take a look at this part, if I go to my where used tab, you can see that it's actually showing the actual reference here. So if I go back to my assembly and I go to uses, you can see that there's that parent-child relationship that's been established here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the repair utility and see how we can repair this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start and then we'll go to all programs and we'll go to Autodesk and then we're going to go to Autodesk data management right here and we're going to go into this folder called Tools, and we'll have this Autodesk Reference Repair Utility. Once you've launched the Autodesk Reference Repair Utility, you'll get this little dialog box that comes up, just like this. So here you've got your user, password, server, um, database, and the actual path here. So again, you want to make sure that you're going to be using the administrator account, and if you've got an admin password, you want to go ahead and put that in there as well and then specify your server name and the database that you want the Autodesk Reference Repair Utility to actually scan. And here you're going to specify the actual path. The two options down here, we've got the help, which will take you to the Wiki um, Vault Help web page. And then you've got click here to access application settings. So here you've got a couple different options that you can set. You've got the inventor project file, you've got the configuration file where it's going to look for. You've got the log file, and then you've got the output file here as well. So for the log file, the output file, I'm just going to change this to uh, my desktop right here. And we'll click OK. And same thing for the output file. We'll just put that on the desktop. 
and we'll click OK. And then once you're ready, what we're going to do is go ahead and click on Start, and it's just going to come up with a pop-up saying that you know the selected this folder has already been scanned. So what I can say is, you know, because I've already scanned the actual root of the drive, so if I wanted to change that, I could specify the actual location, you know, where I wanted to actually start the scan. So I wanted to start it on the root, so I'm just going to hit yes again. And this is going to actually go in and actually start the process. So you can see right now it's actually logging into the vault. So a couple of things that you want to make sure is, if you're going to be scanning, if your vault has inventor files, you want to make sure inside that settings that you actually have uh, the vault project file set in there. Um, I did a previous scan just to test it out just to see if it would pick up the project file. If it wasn't listed there, it doesn't pick it up. So you have to make sure that you have that setting turned on and you actually put in the path. So just say your project file was on the root, you would put root and then the forward slash and then put in the actual project uh, file. So you can see now it's actually going in and processing all the files. So it's just going to go one by one. So once the scan's finished, a pop-up will come up saying the utility has finished scanning the selected files. If you'd like to perform another scan, please close this application and start it again. So when I click OK, you can scroll down and see all the files that were, pro were actually processed here. Uh, so we'll take a look and see if it picked up uh, these files right here. The scan time is going to vary depending on the amount of files that you have within the actual vault. Again, if I go back into the settings, this option right here is going to make a difference as well. So you've got process all versions. So if you're taking a look at a basic vault, essentially what this means is every single version of that file essentially is going to get scanned. If you're looking at professional or vault workgroup, you're talking about the historical versions as well. So this will include the revisions um, inside a vault. So you have to watch out to say, you know, if you want to check this option or not. So if we close, go ahead and close the repair utility, we can see here we get two files. One is a log file that gets tamped with the actual vault's name and the vault database and it has the date on it and there's an actual XML file in here. So if we double click on this log file, we can actually see that it's going in and it's taking a look at a file, it's processing it, it's looking at the handler, and then it'll come up saying if there's any references that were missing, or if there was any you know, references that I found. So inside of Vault, I've gone in and actually named this folder called Table Design Reference Issue. So let's just do a quick find and see if it picks it up. So table design reference issue. So if we scroll down and we keep going, we can see here that we've got three missing references that were found. So we've got reference one, reference two, and reference three. So we've got two matches and we've got two matches here for this part and one match for this part. So the next step we're going to take a look is how can we repair it. So Vault knows that there's missing references here in the assembly. So we're going to actually use this XML file. We'll be able to open it up inside of Excel and then we'll be able to actually fix those references. I'm going to open up Excel. Just going to start with Microsoft Office and I'm going to use Microsoft Excel 2010. And I'm going to open up the actual Excel file. So here I'm just going to go to open and we'll go over to our desktop. And here I've got the XML right here. And I'll go and click on open. And I'm going to open this up as an XML table. I'll go and click OK. So with the XML file open, you can see over here on the left side we get a couple of different headers. We get parent missing reference. And then we've got parent version, we've got reference and file, matching reference inside of vault, the reference version, and then if we want to accept the value. And then we've got server, vault, folder, source, and a reference unique ID. So in here on the actual parent missing reference, you can see that it automatically brought up the actual assembly that I was having an issue with. 
If I click on this pull down right here, I can actually filter out the assemblies. So if there was more than one assembly, I didn't have to you know, show all the different assemblies here. If we look at the parent version, if there's multiple versions, I could turn them and turn them off by using this, this, uh, this, by using the short functionality in here. So I can turn them on, turn them off. If we go into the reference in file, so here I've got three different files that are having referencing issues within the actual top level assembly. So what you want to try to do is kind of work with the file one at a time. So you really don't want to show them all, so you really don't get confused here. So first what I'm going to take a look at is the template tc dal abcipt So I'm going to uncheck the other two and I'll go and click OK. So you can see here I'm working with the same assembly. The reason why there's two rows right here because it found two different matches. So I can see I've got a template tc dal abcipt inside a template folder and then I've got the same file name underneath the table design reference issue in here. So I want Vault to relink that this assembly to this part. So underneath the accepted value here, I'm going to just type in true. So I just hit T, and I'm going to click OK, and this is going to satisfy the actual missing reference. So now I'm done dowel ABC. So I'm going to take a look at the next file. So here I'm going to go to Reference and File, and I'm going to uncheck the, the dowel ABC, and I'm going to go over to the leg, and I'll click OK. So here on the leg, it did the same thing. It found another file right here inside of the template folder. So I'm just going to accept this one. So I'll hit true. And we'll finish off the last one. And we'll go to the, the table top this time. So you've got the TC top. And you can see that it found only one reference in here. So you can see it's automatically going to designs, template, um, template and then tc dash top abc to ipt so notice it automatically found this reference so if we go back into this log file and I do that find again so if I do table design reference issue and I'll cancel it will scroll down so we look for the table design reference issue and you can see here we have the three missing references found. Uh, so we had uh, two matches found, two matches found, but only one match that was found here. So I know I don't want this to go into that template folder. So what I'm going to actually do is tell it that I want to actually specify in a different location. So if we go back inside of our vault, notice I've got the actual template tc dash top.abc.ipt it's located right here inside the table design reference folder issue so if I go back to the Excel I can change this factual path right here so I'm just gonna go back and we'll go back to our Dell component I'm just listing them both here because I want to reference this path right here so I'm just gonna copy this and we'll come over here and we'll replace it right here and so I'm manually changing that reference right here because I want it to be using the actual design reference right here so when I click on the reference and file again and I show all the files and click OK you can see I've created one that says true and we'll click on this reference file here that's true and then this reference file here so I've got three true values here so once you're ready to save what we can do is hit save on the Excel document it'll bring up the save as. We don't want to save this as an XLS um, file. What we want to do is actually save this back to an XML data. So here I'm going to just going to call this one fixed and we'll go and hit save and we'll hit continue. So we have saved the actual file and you can see it's an XML file in here as well. So again just a quick review you know what we want to make sure is you know always find the references here and make sure that you know you know if you have a missing reference here so just say we go and actually scan using the, um, the utility and it doesn't find any matching references inside the vault what you'll actually see is a couple of question marks that will come up here underneath the matching reference so again the tools that you want to use is you know going back into the vault professional or you know vault basic and actually searching for the specific files you know just trying to find the actual path where is it actually located inside of my vault right here and then you can manually change and update that reference 
So now that we've saved the file, let's take a look at how we can actually upload this data. So in order to upload the file, what we're going to do is first go onto the actual server. And uh, the server is going to be wherever you have Autodesk Data Management Server Console installed. And what we're going to do is actually load ADMS Console through the actual command prompt. So here I've got uh, command prompt open and I'm going out to C Program Files Autodesk ADMS Professional 2014. If we're using Vault Basic, it'll be uh, you know ADMS uh, uh, 2014. It'll probably be ADMS Vault 2014 that you'll be going into. And then the ADMS Console folder. And what we're going to be actually looking for is the connectivity.adms console. So here if I go over to my C drive and we'll go into let's say C and then we'll go into program files and then Autodesk, ADMS Professional, ADMS Console, and we're gonna be looking for this connectivity.adms console.exe. So what we want to do is first make sure that you've got the console closed. If you don't, if you've got it already open, maybe you might be doing a backup or anything like that. So you want to make sure your ADMS console is closed and then load the command prompt and then go out to this location. So some of the actual commands that we're going to be doing is dash O. So this is going to tell Vault console that we want to actually import our actual reference table. The dash N means which vault name are we going to be using. So which database we want to import this uh, reference table into. So here I've got a vault called vault. So I'm going to do dash n dash vault. And then the dash fin, this is going to be where is my XML file. So remember when we hit save as, I clicked on, uh, um, I clicked on the XML uh, database. And then I put in fix.xml. And then I've got dash vu for the administrator and dash vp. So now when I hit enter, it will simply go in and actually fix all the references. And you can see that it's going to go in and uh, automatically um, fix all the references for us. So once, once you click OK, a couple of checks that you can do is go into the ADMS console and take a look at the actual console log and see if it's actually fixed those references in there.